Welcome back. Um, I am starting now uh, what is at the top of your page titled Unit 1, Activity 2. Um, in our previous video, uh, we noticed that it depends on what materials we use in our loop, whether the bulbs would light or not light. So the idea of just having a closed pathway isn't really the whole story. Uh, what matters is what the materials are. And our terms there are conductor and insulator. And so for our purposes here, a conductor is a material that does enable these lights to glow and an insulator does not. So for example, the graphite rod, the pencil lead is a conductor. Um, all the metals were conductors. The paper, the cardboard were not conductors. So some other terminology that we need here is uh, we need a continuous conducting pathway in order for the bulbs to light up. Um, a continuous all the way around conducting because the materials for all of this stuff have to be conductors uh, making up our whole pathway. So if we have a closed continuous conducting pathway like I have here. I've closed the loop and everything is made out of conductors, then the bulbs glow. Um, a term for a closed continuous conducting pathway that has a battery in it, which can make the bulbs glow, a term we can use for that starting now is a circuit. Um, it is possible to have a closed continuous conducting pathway that doesn't have a light, that doesn't have a battery in it, like here. It's a closed loop all the way around, um, but there's no battery in this loop. It's a closed loop entirely made out of conductors. Um, so in order to make the bulb glow, I need a closed continuous conducting pathway that has a battery in it, um, and that is a circuit. So something that I want to follow up on, um, we found a way that we can test do we have a closed continuous conducting pathway? I'll call that a CCP, continuous conducting pathway. I can test by whatever I connect in here uh, between these two points, if it's a closed, if it's a continuous conducting pathway from here to here, then I should see both bulbs glow. And if I don't, then there must be some insulator in between. So coming to activity two, I'm just going to test a bunch of stuff with the socket itself. And we can see the socket without the bulb screwed in here. And I just screw the bulb in like that and unscrew, come out. And the bulb itself, uh, there's a glass globe on top. Um, there's a metal thing around here, some black stuff, and then like a little tip at the bottom underneath the black stuff. Um, here is a larger bulb, like one you'd actually use in your home that I broke apart so we could see more clearly. There's that tip at the bottom, this black ring. This is the thread because that's what screws in. Also, you can maybe see here that I've got uh, two metal supporting wires that hold together what came out of this light bulb, but what we call a filament. It's a little swirly twirly uh, metal thing, um, and that's the part that glows in this kind of light bulb. It's broken out of here. But I'm going to test out some various things. Um, the clips and the plates on here, as you can see on the top of the page for activity two, which one is A, which one is B, it doesn't matter, I'll call this one A, this one B. Um, so this clip A connects to this top plate, this clip B connects to that bottom plate B. So what if I touch clip A and clip B? The two bulbs appear to both be out. So between here and here, I must not have a closed loop. 
and looking at why I can see this metal connects here, this metal connects there uh, between the two plates, but the two plates have air in between them. So let's try, what if I do clip A and plate A? The bulbs do glow, and if I look in between my two uh, alligator clips here, then I've got a bunch of metal connecting the space in between. So what if I try plate A and plate B? I am touching both of them, but it does not glow. Um, there is air in between those. Or if I try plate A and the base. The bulbs are not glowing, so I must have some kind of insulator in between these two. Um, oh, it must be the base. So I guess this plastic base must be an insulator. Uh, if I do clip A and the base, same story. There is not a closed continuous conducting pathway between these two spots. Now let's try the bulb. And this part uh, might have some more surprises in it for us um, because you've probably never really closely investigated the bulb. But what about the tip of the bulb? And I'm gonna use, because this one's so small, I'm gonna use this old broken one just because it's larger. So if I connect to the tip of the bulb, I'm just gonna connect both of these clips onto the tip of the bulb. And I hope you can see that it glows even though my two uh, are not touching each other. Then when I get it properly onto the tip, these do glow. So what does that tell us about whether the tip of the bulb is a conductor or an insulator? Or if I clip onto the thread, of the bulb. They glow, 